So we're here at EGX 2016. I've just had to go untethered, as you can tell, by the wonderful red marker on my face. I'm here with Scott. Um, I don't know where to start. Um, so it's like exciting, beautiful, adorable, kind of stressful. I think the, t the term tethered and the whole kind of emotional tether theme of it works perfectly because of how attached you got. Is that something that you feel has come so naturally through the VR element of it and something that you had in the makeup of the game in the first place? Absolutely. The the VR medium, it just gives us such a, a fantastic tool to immerse players in this this world. It's something you couldn't do elsewhere. And when the little peeps are looking up at you, it, it's, it is more emotional. We, we, we gave them giant eyes so that you'd look at them. And, and when, I don't know if you notice, if you shake your head from side to side, they'll mimic you. And it, it's all little little tricks to yeah. try and draw you into the to the experience and it, it is quite upsetting when they start to, to throw themselves off the edge. Yeah, sorry, just give us an outline of, of, of how the game works, how we're playing Tethered, what, what is the, the ethos of Tethered? What, what is tethered? So, uh, Tethered, it's a simple, unique uh, and completely immersive VR strategy game and it puts you uh, in control of this beautiful world uh, which you must restore balance to. Um, so the, the key elements of the game are tethering and collecting spirit energy as you use the peeps to, to meet your goals. So what was the, the original ethos behind it? Did you want to find really like the first VR sandbox game? I find it's very appro approachable. The, the VR is something that I found straight away fitted for it. I found myself leaning around and looking around and things like that. Did you, was your, what, how was your first approach coming to it and how did you find yourself on, on making Tethered? So when we set out, we wanted to create a really comfortable experience for the player and put them inside our world. It's, it's kind of a tool that lets us put gamers inside our imaginations. And it, it sounds kind of mad and wrong, but um, it's, it's such a powerful thing. And uh, yeah, it, it all conspired to, to make the player feel like they were in that world. We, we could have tried to do some kind of reality, uh, but by going for that, um, Studio Ghibli style, it all helped to make the player feel that they were in something fantastic and magical. And is that something that took a lot of tweaking on your end to kind of find a way that that made it feel natural? There's a lot of playing about with the VR at early stages so to really make it feel like you were kind of stepping into it and you still had that kind of God element to it? And so when we set out, I mean, we all, um, we were prototyping in VR at home mm -hmm. and we were trying out different um, sort of genres of game. And it, it just quickly became apparent that the God game genre uh, and the, the sort of strategy genre were, were just right for, for VR. It's that idea that um, console attempts to, to do strategy games when you've not got a mouse, that's really difficult. But when you can use your head for the mouse, that's a really powerful tool and you can look at things and you can create associations between them. So we, we just got a sense that it was gonna work. And was that something the kind of the control dynamic that just clicked immediately for you? Because it's like you said, straight away, using your head as the mouse works so perfectly. I mean, before you explain to me to use the blue dot as the cursor and look around, it's something that just made sense. Is that something that was never really a struggle, the control scheme, something that just really made sense? We, we tried several different variants mm. of control scheme and different ways to do the tether, a kind of click to start the tether uh, and then a click to end the tether. And they all had kind of merits, but ultimately that idea that it's kind of an elastic band that you're grabbing and dragging down, that felt kind of right, and um, we, we tried other things like the, the um, absorbing the spirit energy. You know, when you're you're holding the button down, that was one of those feels great in VR moments where you're getting the parallax of things that are kind of close to you um, versus the things that are further away. And around the office, we're all kind of opening our mouths as we're sucking up that spirit energy, and you're you're trying to get it all before it disappears. Um, so it, it's that that yeah, just a great balance of. The experience and so um it's only on psvr for now um, when can we expect to, to get our hands on it and, and will it be coming to like oculus and vibe in the future uh, so we're absolutely focused on playstation mm -hmm. vr um we're going to be launching the game in october and so it'll be on the playstation store as a digital download mm -hmm. and uh yeah hopefully gamers will love it well i loved it so thank you very much thanks for your time thank thanks. you i'm here at egx 2016 i've just had a go got to have a we're here at EGX 2016. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Stable Orbit is the name of the game that we're about to do. I think.
<laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm flagging now. I <laughs> so I'm here at EGX 2016. That sounded really weird. Like <laughs> what was your name again, mate? Uh, Mitch. Mitch. Cool. Good. I would have said Mark and now I'd be wrong. 